Hi Greyhound peeps out there. We are back with the Hounds for Life show. This is episode 12 and I am here with my lovely co-host Ale. Hello everyone. Uh, I originally from Argentina but living in New Zealand since last year and I really love greyhounds. That's so lovely to have you on the show, Ale. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> awesome. That's so wonderful. Ale is all uh, coming with me quite a lot when I visit the North Island and we go to Night Rave and hang out with the greyhounds there. Um, so it's lovely to have you on the show. What a, what a nice surprise. <laughs> So today um, we have a full show and it's all about something we wanted to show you in ages. It is about greyhound puppies. Yay! I know you all love puppies as much as we do and we made a big trip uh, up north uh, last week and took lots of footage um, which is all uh, for the upcoming episodes and one of them was a, a marvelous interview with Lisa and her yeah. greyhound tribe. <laughs> um, you will see she likes a certain color. I don't yeah. give it away yet, but it's pretty <laughs> obvious. <laughs> yeah. um, before we go any further, I would love to see you, if you haven't done so yet, to subscribe to our channel, please. That is the most effective way to support us and it doesn't cost you anything. And put your thumbs up if you like the show or a video. Thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed and who comes back to the show and visits us and comments. We are so appreciating that. It really keeps us going uh, if we know that what we are doing is what you really want to see. Hmm. So since <laughs> the last show, we have rehomed six dogs. That was Treff and Rocket, which you show, uh, saw in the last show, and then it was Lady, Wendy, Buffy, and Bolt. I personally found super interesting last episode yeah. because I discovered how easy it could be living with a greyhound in a small apartment. Yes. And it, this is my case, so Ooh. I really want one soon. <laughs> so, fingers crossed. That's amazing, Al. I'm so happy for you. Yes, yes. As you now know, greyhounds are the best dogs for small space living. And if you have a small apartment, like you do, that's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful. And as we now do, uh, we like to read out some comments um, that you have um, made on the video since last show. And as always, I need my glasses to do that. <laughs> Um, and there was a lovely uh, comment from uh, just Anila. Uh, the door thingy, it's commenting on the how to do the home check video. The door thingy is neat, but let's, let's be real. Your fence is not really an obstacle for the grey if they want to leave. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a wonderful video full of good advice. So thanks for commenting. Of course. A greyhound can jump probably up to two meters physically, but a greyhound is not trained to do it, so the greyhound won't do it, right? So that's the point here. Another comment came from Zoe uh, uh, to one of our foster videos about cinnamon. And she said, I love this video, super cute, but I think you, sh you should keep her <laughs> because she seems to love you and be really happy with you. <laughs> Thank you for commenting. I know that looks very obvious, um, but we cannot possibly keep all our foster dogs. <laughs> and believe me, they will look with you as a new owner exactly as they look with us. Another lovely comment came from uh, Roman. Uh, to the uh, video 7 uh, frequently asked questions about greyhounds. Good informative video. We love x races greyhounds as a pet. Thank you. Yes, we all do. Mm. And then a very short one to the 10 reasons why greyhounds love to live in apartments from Carioca or something. Sorry, Carioca. Carioca. I think. Um, so good. Thank you. <laughs> Another comment from four days ago to the uh, video of um, uh, another comment to the uh, training video from Rachel is just picked up my greyhound yesterday I've already fallen in love with him so beautiful so cheeky <laughs> congratulations to uh, James Mintz 
And the last comment we want to share with you today is a, a, a comment on our channel. It's from Zuha Abasi and he is saying, wow, amazing song at the start. Thank you Abasi for noticing it. Yeah, by the way, it reminds me, it sounds me really familiar, reminds me of... Uh, the song, uh, yeah. This, yeah, it's ah. beautiful. Who is singing? I okay. was wondering. Okay, so, um, the song might remind you of a Beatles song, Here Comes the Sun. Yes, right. <laughs> because we uh, made the tones uh, similar. Yeah. And the lyrics are from me, and the singing uh, are me and Shanna, and Shanna's playing the guitar. That's extraordinary, Maya. Oh, Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoy it. Yes. <laughs> it's quite catchy, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, Here comes, comes the sun. Da, 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 da. Here comes the sun. And I say it's all right. <laughs> so let's go into the show. This is episode 12 and the title is Sophie, Lisa and 10 Greyhound Puppies. Little darling, it's been a long, long racing season. Little darling, it's time to rest and find a home. Here comes the hounds, didn't you know? Here comes the hounds, and I say it's for life. Hounds for life. Hounds for life. Upcoming is uh, our interview with Lisa. Um, she is a uh, owner of seven retired greyhounds and ten puppies because she's not only having retired greyhounds she yeah. also breeds from her own greyhounds a uh, litter uh, every two years for racing so we got amazing cute puppy footage and i'm so keen to show it to you finally we wanted to do that yes. for ages but being there i do understand why you do not want a greyhound puppy in your life they are putting everything into shreds and pieces. The skin, the clothes, the, the everything. Yeah, I imagine it must be hard at the beginning uh, with uh, managing all the education and all this part with the dogs. That's at what the... I learned actually. Um, that's a really interesting aspect, Ali, that um, they actually don't get education. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. Because they are, should follow their instinct and run, you know, yes. later. And they should not sit in the starter box and uh, when they should go, uh, look for their owner and wonder what to do, like tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah. oh, <cute>. <laughs> so that was also, obviously, um, yeah. you know. So that was also new to me. I never thought of it, but that's actually too, true. So they leave the puppies really feral. They run around and they do what they want and nobody ever tells them off. They get very confident. They are always petted and, and um, praised for whatever they do. Um, so they are confident and they start, start to chase a little once, once they are old enough. So that's coming up and I hope you enjoy as much the footage as we enjoyed the day taking it. Hiya, my name's Lisa. I live in New Zealand, Tarakina. Um, I've come from England 19 years ago and I um, got so many greyhounds because of an ex-boyfriend. We had one puppy, one race dog from an auction and then we had another one to keep that one company and then we had another one and then we decided to breed and had 10 puppies in England and then decided to come to New Zealand. So we bought a house online, unseen, bought that. Um, all, my, all the visas and stuff happened within two years. And um, I brought three unraced puppies and three retired puppies with me. And in the, with all those years, I've just bred out of my own puppies that I brought from England. So all my dogs are related. They were either uncles, brothers, cousins, grandchildren, whatever, but they're all my breeding. Well, there's 10 puppies, seven boys, three girls, all born on Anzac Day, so they're coming up for four months. 
Um, Sophie is the mother of us and she was called Curious Life when she used to race. And they have, she's got another litter that are just racing at the moment and they're going quite well. Um, when I had the puppies, I usually try to wean them, uh, get them on solids about 10 days old because there was a lot of puppies in that litter, there was 10. I've only had two other lots of 10 before and it was quite hard work for her. So I give them Weetabix and milk uh, when their eyes start opening and also get them on meat and um, puppy biscuits about it's about two and a half weeks and then uh, they were all in the washroom inside so I could keep an eye on them and they're all getting fed and then about like six eight weeks after the first injections they all go outside into the little pen and then they go into the bigger pen when they can't get through the fences and um, I had one runt in the litter of 10 his name was Tiny which is now Mickey because he's grown up a bit and one night at two o'clock in the morning I came to see them and he was in a corner all cold and not looking very well so we just fed him for a couple of days with a syringe and now he's um, quite big you can't tell he's the runt anymore um, I breed every two years because all my dogs are mine, I'm the owner, trainer, breeder, the whole lot. So usually it goes in patterns of two years, so the, by the time the one lot have finished, the last litter is ready to retire. So I'm usually racing one litter at a go. My dogs only have had, usually get two litters because I wait till they've retired, have a litter, see if they're any good, and then breed again if they're any good. Two's usually the most. By about seven, I think you have to have special permission to breed from them and, um, and that's it then I'll just looking at the, the offspring see if there's any offspring that I can breed out of next because all these are all all retired and just laying in the house no more breeding no more anything just relaxing and taking my sofas up both of mine um, are done by AI and I actually saw the process this time where they get it and defrost the semen and put it into the dog by the operation and it was really interesting. Mostly I get six to seven puppies but this litter I've had ten which is quite a big amount of puppies. Um, Sky went to have a, a natural breeding once and she went down to the South Island so it was like a little holiday. She went on the boat, got picked up, taken to the um, trainer's place and mated a couple of times and then came back and had the puppies. I don't tend to get an x-ray or anything or an ultrasound because if you've been told you've got five puppies you just wait for five puppies and you might not get five so it's a bit scarier so I tend to just wait and see and hope I've um, hope I know when they're finished and when they're going to start. I mean, Sophie has just had this litter. She's only had three seasons and that first one was after she finished racing. So, so out of the three seasons she's had, she's been pregnant for the two of them. Uh, when we have puppies, we tend to keep all of the puppies good, bad and ugly because um, if they don't race with me, then I go straight to retirement. So I will never ever sell one of my puppies. They're my babies. I was there when each one of them was born and they either stay with me or they go to retirement homes. Breakfast time, once I've got up, go and give them Weetabix and milk for their first meal of the day. Then I, because I have race dogs as well, I go and wash the race dogs out and do that side, then come back. At the moment, the puppies are all ten or all together, and so I take them out into the big field for a good run around for an hour or so. Depends what I can get away with if they try escaping or if I've got somewhere to go. Soon I'll be splitting the puppies up because there's seven boys and three girls, and it's better to have a few in numbers so they can't fight and gang up against each other. So in the next few weeks, I'll be looking who's favouring who and splitting them up and putting more pens up for them. And then um, at that time I give them food, they, it varies. They have horse meat, cow meat, uh, puppy biscuits, tripe, um, uh, hearts, cooked up, rice, vegetables, the whole lot. They have a mixture of everything. Then usually uh, about three o'clock-ish, I give them another small meal if they need anything else and top it up a bit more. And then by about six o'clock, I go and put some more out there. Um, I separate my dogs quite early, my puppies quite early from the mum because there's a lot of them and they just seem to bite and scratch her. We have them in the washroom and I have another gate so the mum, Sophie, can hop out and stay there so she's close to them. But then sometimes they jump out and follow her. So we have to put them back out because she's always in the house because she's a retired dog she stays here anyway and if she wants to go back she can go back to the gate we have a series of baby gates so the other six dogs don't follow her but I have found these 
grandma in with the puppies before trying to feed the baby so I've had mum grandma and baby in there before and they've been all right but I tend to do that because it, it's too many puppies and it's nice you know you've got to um it's fairer on her she's had to had them all and fed them for the few weeks so I do separate them I don't leave them all in together either because they can be a bit boisterous with the mum and she gets quite snappy so there's a little place it's all fenced out just outside our bedrooms with a light on specially for them and they stay out there for the first few weeks when they're when they're little little and then like now they're about four four and a half months old or they just tend to fight and then they get separated and they'll be going we have various pens around the place down the front separated and so we can just keep an eye out, out eye out on them and just go out there and play with them and feed them um, when they get a bit older, we start playing around with them with fluff. So you might have seen them playing with the fluff and the law just to get them used to it. I tend to take them down to the track maybe 11 months just to have a look, see what's happening. In that meantime, we just go out there and play with them and just, you know, just be have contact with them. By about 11 months, we take it down there to have a look, see what all the other greyhounds are doing. And if they're quite keen, what I tend to do is let them look at the law and let go just so they run up the straight a little bit just so they get used to chasing the fluff that they've chased at home so it's not all a new experience but they get hand hand reared and touched from the day they're born I have my daughter goes in there all the time and her friends come around because it's good to touch them and spend one-to-one -one with them and get to know them even if they do uh, bite you slightly and scratch your skin off because that's their playing but it's it's good I've, i do like puppies but they can be a bit feral <laughs> after 11 months then i'd take them to the track most weeks to um, to have a look and try if they'll chase the fluff usually in instincts they will chase some of them don't then they you have to have special training with that but if they chase, that's good. And the next thing is you get them going through the boxes, getting them go through the boxes with the lids down, running round. And then when they're 16 months, I think it is, then you can qualify your dogs ready for racing. But in between, you might have a few that don't want to chase. So that's when you've got to start thinking outside the box, like using another race dog to go round. So they chase the dog round so they can sort of see what they're doing. Put squeaky things on the arm of the lure to see if they'll chase that but hopefully they will chase, otherwise it's a long struggle. Uh, my last litter, not my last litter, the litter before two of them didn't make it to the track because one wanted just to fight and play and the other one just stopped. So they just got rehomed straight away. I wasn't messing about. They didn't want to race, so they rehomed. One's in town, which I see her all the time, Scylla, and Angel's been rehomed through Night Rave. So still keep in contact with all my retired dogs through Facebook and see what they're up to, which is great for me. And sometimes they pop in, which is even better. Um, I also have seven retired greyhounds in my house as well. These include dogs that might not have gone through the gap list, that might have been a little bit vicious or just needs a different understanding. So I've just kept them. They've retired because some of them have been injured. Um, so I retired them. Some of them, one of them just didn't want to race anymore. So I gave, you know, gave up with her racing. So she's just in the house. Some of them are nervous as well. And there's enough greyhounds to go through rehoming and they've looked after me and won some races. So I'm going to look after you lot till the end. Um, a day in a greyhound's life is mostly sleeping. We have quite a big property, so they do go outside and run up and down the fields for about three minutes, then come inside and nick the sofas which there's plenty of them but there's never enough to sit on and then just sleep for the most of the day I feed them throughout the day mine graze which Fatima and Rachel doesn't like but they don't know I just put food down and they help, help themselves all day and uh, that's about it really they just do what they like and watch telly telly's usually on they quite like television but when they watch the races, they go running around the TV because they hear the law going past, especially a newly retired dog. That's one of their great things. They don't, it's so amazing when they don't know different noises like the Hoover or anything else or the television or the telephone, things like that, that they get used to. I do take some of them into town for a run around with other dogs every now and again, but we do have enough space here and it's all enclosed and it's all safe. So I'd rather let them run around a safe area because there's nothing worse than a greyhound deciding he's going to go for a run and you are never going to catch them. It's happened before and it's never going to happen again. <laughs> I love greyhounds because they're so easy. 
they are a bit dozy. If there's a, a hole to fall in, they'll fall in it, but they'll survive. I've always loved dogs. I've worked at boarding kennels when I was in England and then got into racing and I've always wanted, you know, dogs. And they're just easy peasy. So they haven't got any good ears though. That's the only problem. They don't come back when they're shouting. Food usually helps. <laughs> Trying to get a seat on the sofa is not good and your bed is never your own again. But that's just what you've got to put up with. One of the dogs I brought over from England, people might remember her, she was called Babe, she was called Sexy Babe. She was very lucky to get here at all because when I took the sixth for their injections in uh, England, she slipped a collar, she ran off, I saw her get knocked over by a car and then come out the back of a car, then she ran off down by the railway line. Three days later I got a phone call saying she was by the railway lines up in the town, so I went and got her. Not a scratch on her. Couldn't believe it. I, that she was playing with horses in the field, by the rivers, by the trains, everything. So she came over to New Zealand. She was lucky because she had to have her oral injections. She was lucky to come over. And she came over here and she did quite well racing. But then she had a stroke on the track. And that took me quite a few months and months to get her right. Just sleeping next to her, taking her out. And I get Sonia from the rehoming place at Sanson took her in the end because I was going back to England and she lived a life out to the end and she was such a gorgeous little girl. Thank you very much for having me on your Hounds for Life show. You can find me at Wanganui with all my crazy dogs with all their funny names. Anything after a song title, that's one of mine. I've got Young Dumb Broke and I've got many other songs that you might remember. Okay, bye. And now, finally, we bring to you part two of the training with Greyhounds with our expert trainer, Rachel from Nightrave Greyhounds. She is now showing us how to teach your Greyhound basic commands like sit, lay down and stay. And she will also explain the clicker training again. Okay, so last time I was here, we talked about how to clicker train your greyhound. We talked about teaching them some fun and focused tricks. Now we can start to talk about teaching our dog a few more advanced commands. Henry's already offering me a down, so I can use my clicker to mark that, and then I can give him a reward. Good boy. Okay. When I want him to come away and start something new, I'm going to give him a release word, and that might be okay or it might be finished, or it might be whatever you like. Good boy. Good boy. Well done. Clever dog. So when we want to start to teach sit with our greyhound, Henry knows sit, so he thinks he's really clever when he's doing his sit. When we want to start to teach sit with our greyhound, we always want to start with a nice, soft thing to work on, like this mink blanket that we have here on the ground. Henry. Yay, good boy! So when we want to start to teach sit with our greyhound, first take them onto the blanket, or the soft area, which being a greyhound, they'll want to be on. Now they won't all immediately sit on it like he did, but they'll often lie on it. If they lie on it, that's great. You can say good, and you can try luring them up into a sit like this. Good man. And when they achieve that position, you can click them with your clicker and give them a treat. Good boy, yay, well done. Okay, good man. So another way of teaching sit is to raise the treat above the dog's head. Now Henry does no sit, so for him to bend his hocks and lower his bottom to the ground is not too hard for him. Sometimes you'll have to go like this, you'll have to back into them, walk into them. Good boy, yeah. And if you do that on a couch or on a hammock bed, you are likely to have quite good success. If you do it just on the flat ground, even with a blanket, probably they will go backwards because bending their hocks into a sit is not something that they're very comfortable with. Once they learn how to do it, they can do it really easily, as Henry can show you. Good dog. Good dog. So now I'm praising some duration on the sit because that's something he has historically not been very good with. He historically likes to lie down when he's been sitting. And he's not doing that right now, so that's what I'm rewarding him for. Okay. The other thing I have just done is I have broken him off before he chose to stop. And when you can do that, that's brilliant. Try not to make your, your task go on for so long that your greyhound becomes bored and uninterested. They get very bored very quickly. So add duration slowly. 
Keep it fun, keep it interesting. Henry! Yeah, good man, Henry, sit. Good boy, good boy. Well done. So I think you could see that time how it's sometimes a little bit awkward for them to figure out how to put their legs when they're moving into a sit. And he, he moved quite slowly that time, so it was a little bit easier for you to see. So this clicker that I am using is a little box that makes a click sound, like that. That is all it is. We use it as a behavioural marker. We use it to tell the dog when he's doing the right thing. Now, we can say, oh, well, I just say good boy, or I just say yes, and those are fine, but they don't always sound the same. Sometimes you're tired. Sometimes you have a cold. Sometimes you're really excited and you go, yes. Sometimes you're like, oh, that's okay, yes. To your dog, are those things the same? Maybe, maybe not. But the click is always the same. The click doesn't get excited. So whenever the dog hears a click, he knows that a treat will follow. Now that can be really good because when we are trying to get our dog to do something and we want to give him the reward, sometimes the process of giving him the reward makes him stop doing the behavior. So here is an example. Henry, good boy. So if I ask Henry to sit, Henry, sit. Yeah, good man. That's not a sit. Henry, sit. Yeah, good boy. But then when I want to give him the reward, he gets up. So maybe he thinks that he's getting a reward for getting up. Henry, sit. Good. But with the clicker, he hears the click when his bottom hits the ground. So he can put those two things together and say, yes, that is how I do it. So before I start using the clicker for a behavior, first I have to make the link for the dog between the clicker and the treats. And I do that by doing this. I say my dog's name, make sure he's relaxed and kind of with me. Henry, yeah. I click the clicker and then feed a treat. I click the clicker and then feed a treat. Oh, did you get a freebie? I click the clicker and I feed a treat. I click the clicker and I feed a treat. Okay, then I break him off. Yeah, good man. And then I'm going to do it again. Good boy. Click the clicker, feed a treat. Click the clicker feed a treat. Don't try to get the treat in at the same time as the click. It is click and then treat. One click is always one treat. So then I can use it for a behavior. Henry, yay, good boy. Henry, Henry. Down. Yeah, good dog. Like so. Down. Good dog. Henry. Now I want to put some duration on that behavior. Henry, sit. Whee. Notice how when he's getting distracted, I'm not saying his name over and over. I'm saying his name once to see if he will look at me. And if he doesn't, I'm clapping my hands, I'm clicking my tongue, I'm stamping my foot, I'm doing something, I'm moving myself to get him to look at me. Because once he pays attention, he probably will listen. There is no point in me saying his name or giving him commands while he's not paying attention. He won't do anything. Henry. Yay. Come. Hoi. Yeah, good boy. Sit. Yeah, down. Good man. Wait. Wait. Yay. Good dog. Good dog. Down. Good dog. Good dog. So that is how I can build some duration. I can click when he has done the behavior for a length of time. So when you are teaching the behavior, first you click when you first get the behavior. And then once the dog is really good at doing the behavior, you start to build some duration. And that is how you can start to think about building a stay or a wait. Now when you're teaching down for your greyhound, you have a major advantage in that a lot of greyhounds will lie down when presented with a soft bed. So first walk your greyhound up to the bed in a comfortable place. Henry! So some greyhounds like Henry are really comfortable to lie down out and about, and others are not. If they're not, teach it in your lounge. If they are, you can teach it wherever you like. Henry down. Henry down. Can lure it down like this with your hand. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, good dog. And often that's all it takes. 
is to hold your treat on the ground until they figure it out. As long as they're on a comfortable bed. Don't try and do that on a piece of concrete or on a wooden floor. It won't work. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Sit. Yeah. You can do it from a sit. Yeah, good man. And once again, you can lure your sit up from your down. Good dog. Well done. Good boy. Good boy. Don't do place training with your greyhound without food treats or a toy or something your greyhound really likes. It's it's hard for them to figure out how to move their legs in this new way that you're asking and to do it on command. And if you're not providing them with a fun reward, they'll get very bored and they'll probably shut down. So you need to provide something fun for them to keep them in the game. Also, keep your sessions short. Two to three minutes is ideal. One or two sits, maybe three, maybe two or three downs, no more while they're learning. Once they know, like Henry here, you can do six, seven, eight. But even a dog that's really good and really well trained, a greyhound is gonna time out on sits at about 20 in a day, okay? So if you are practicing and practicing and practicing, your dog is getting tired. You think he's just sitting, but he is actually doing a weightlifter's job with his tummy muscles because greyhound tummy muscles aren't made for sitting. That doesn't mean your dog shouldn't sit. It doesn't mean he can't sit. It means be aware that you are asking him for a harder physical job than you think that you are. You may have noticed if you have a retired uh, greyhound or sometimes if you walk and you see a greyhound owners with their retired greyhounds that some intend to pull on the leash uh, in a new home. That can happen. It is a mix of excitement and, and untrained uh, behavior. Uh, we show you in this segment what we do with our foster greyhounds and how we advise our new owners to use a harness to stop pulling. I'm going to show you how to use a harness in a way that stops your greyhound to pull on the leash when you walk it. Now there are two types of harnesses. One harness I have here is a front buckled harness. And the other variety of harness is a back buckled harness. So imagine the dog is here and then the harness is buckled on the back between the shoulders. And this variety is a harness where the shoulders, where this part goes over the shoulders and this buckle is at the front, at the chest of your greyhound. And now this is the only way to apply a harness to a dog to stop it pulling. If the harness would be on uh, between the shoulders buckled, the, uh, I mean the leash between the shoulders buckled, it will actually increase the pulling because the dog has more strength in the upper part of the body to pull. So it will not stop the dog pulling, it will actually increase the pulling. If you want to stop your greyhound to pull and teach him how to properly walk on a leash, you have to have a front buckle harness like this one. So we're going to demonstrate you how to put it on the greyhound and how it instantaneously ch uh, changed the way uh, the greyhound walks on the leash. The harness will come with a part that is in a contrast color. This contrast color goes on the back of the greyhound between the shoulders. Then you can fasten the clip and the front buckle will hang at the chest of the greyhound. There is also a chest part that will clip into the other um, fastener and then uh, the harness needs to be adjusting if it's too big or too small and will uh, fit perfectly fine and snug. You can uh, now attach your lead to the front buckle of uh, the harness and you are good to go to walk your greyhound nicely. In case your greyhound is a heavy puller or you just start with the training, it is a good idea to also um, fasten the martingale uh, collar to the front buckle harness. This will restrict the greyhound even more in its movement and makes it easier to walk in on the leash. Well, uh, the foster today is Bomba. He is three years old and he actually looks like a puppy. He's very playful. <laughs> Uh, 
this is Palmer, our foster greyhound. He's been here for a couple of weeks. His racing name was Nuclear Tool. He, in um, December he will turn four years old, so he's still quite young. So that means he's, he has a lot of energy and he's very playful. But at the same time he's really super sweet, very affectionate, sometimes a bit whining when, when he's alone. He's super cute and uh, I really fell in love with him. So after all he's maybe a foster failure. <laughs> Little darling, it's been a long, long racing season. Little darling, it's time to rest and find a home. Here comes the hounds, didn't you know? Here comes the hounds, and I say it's for life. Hounds for life. Hounds for life. show we hope you have really enjoyed it um, we love to do it and we love to bring out um, this interesting and entertaining uh, stories about um, retired greyhounds to you uh, we can only do it when we know that you want us to do it and give us your support by subscribing commenting putting the thumbs up putting the notification <laughs> on um, and uh, uh, probably send us even a question if you want to uh, head over to our website for more information houndsforlife.nz um, or find us on Facebook to connect with us we would love to do that or Instagram please stay to the end of the show because after we said goodbye we will show you a little bit more of puppy uh, footage um, uh, which is quite cute Thank you. Yes, thank, thank, you thank you. Thank you for watching. I really want one soon. <laughs> <laughs> we find one for Ale and we show him next show. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Until then, bye. 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 <laughs>